Hello everyone, Richard from Forsyth here. I have a pretty interesting box here in front of me. As you see, it's uh, rather thick, but not big enough to hold a guitar. That's because the guitar was broken down. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, I bought a guitar from a guy, a gentleman named John Fields, who worked at PV, still works there, has been working there for about 30 years, and you know, I'm not going to lie and say I know John all that well. I don't. We've had a couple conversations. I'm in the same uh, PV group as him. That's where I met him. Super, super knowledgeable dude. And he's just really cool guy. And he shipped me this guitar. He sold it for pretty cheap because I've talked about how much I love a certain type of guitar in the PV group. And he uh, hit me up about it. So pretty cool. Unfortunately, that was a turbulent time in my life. So when I got this guitar, I didn't even open it. I put it in a closet. And then I ended up a year after that moving to this new place where it's been in my shed ever since. So I thought, why the heck not? Why don't we just open it right now? And uh, <laughs> I will uh, take a picture of how he spelled my name because he spelled it wrong. Come on, John. Yeah, he didn't even spell my last name wrong. It's my first name, Rutchard. I guess I'm Rutchard Dunleavy. So I don't know how he packed it, but I expect good things from a PV guy. Those scratching noises you hear in the background is Coconut messing with his litter box. So let's just play some music while I open it. It's a tax on top of fines. No witness, no crime. I get a dime from your dollar, no dice. Red collar. Talking louder and louder every chance that he gets. Wakes up every afternoon, a sleeper still deeper in debt. Screams at everyone he knows over a minute. Oh my god, I literally had to give him snacks to get him out of the litter box. He's... Anyway. So yeah, it looks, looks like John did a really good job, man. That's a lot of bubble wrap. Now, it's been a couple years, so I can't remember everything he told me was uh, wrong with it and what was right with it, but um, I do actually have another guitar I'm building, so if nothing else, this could totally be for parts. But like I said, he gave it to me ridiculously cheap. I know he said he replaced a pickup. You guys figuring out what it is yet? Recognize that headstock? Rotor. <laughs> What's kind of cool is these uh, inlays have a little bit more black in them than I'm used to. Most of them are a little more white than that. That's kind of neat. Really nice. I mean, just even though they're made in China, just still super playable feeling necks. All right, let's get to the meat to these potatoes. Ah, you even threw me in a little uh, tremolo bar. Thank you, John. Coconut is helping. <laughs> All right. So he did say it had some issues, which it clearly does. Uh, we got the neck plate here. That's good. He said he had replaced this pickup with a Seymour Duncan at some point. I'm not sure if this is that Duncan or not. We can find out. This is not an original rotor pickup either. That's not what they came with. So I wonder what that is. Got all our knobs. But yeah, PV rotor. This is the red one. It's one of the uh, colors I did not have because, quite frankly, I was not super attracted to it. There is a uh, run in this finish. That's interesting. I wonder if it was re-cleared at some point or maybe this was a factory reject. I may have to reach out and ask him about that. That's kind of cool. You hear Coconut playing in his box again. Let's grab a screwdriver and look at a couple things on this. Take a quick look at the electronics cavity, see what's going on in there. I feel like these plastics were uh, from something else and modified to fit this. Oh wow. Lots of stuff going on. Come on John, what's up with this? I guess these are the pickups that were put in. Maybe I think he said I think he did say the neck pickup was never wired up. Something like that. I don't know. It's been two years. 
looks like a bridge ground maybe not what yeah bridge ground we could get this uh, running again but like I said I think I'm gonna use this as a parts guitar and maybe repaint the body later because there's some damage to this body that we could repair and then uh, redo the paint job on it I mean the sparkly reds kinda cool but it's pretty stock for the time I actually have an Ibanez destroyer painted just like this same type of uh, binding as well all right, not gonna worry about opening the trim cavity. All that looks regular, but let's take a look. Maybe see if we can figure out what these pickups are. I have another PV rotor. I just painted sea foam, and I needed a, a bridge, so now we have a bridge. Yeah, so these are uh, no name pickups. I mean, they got brass plates, but I'm not sure how to identify them. There's nothing on there except an F for front and an R for rear yeah nothing really on those the uh, bridge is licensed under Floyd Rose patents like they are but yeah I need these posts I need this bridge I need all the black hardware and stuff let me uh, show you, you can see there's a crack right here let me show you uh, the guitar that I'm repainting that kinda already had a mishap with there's also like little cracks around the neck and stuff. He did tell me about those before he sent it. So yeah, we could make this playable, but I think I, I'd be better suited to use this as parts for another another guitar. So this is the rotor I just recently painted and I started leveling the clear. Uh, unfortunately, I had sat it down for a while and Coconut knocked over a stand that fell into it and caused this gnarly hit right here. So that I'm gonna have to repair and then I can go back to the clear level where I was at on this but overall it's in really good shape I also got this body from the same PV factory that supposedly this guitar came from so the parts should definitely be interchangeable right most importantly though this neck is in fantastic shape it appears to be very little fret wear and that's gonna look good man I have some uh, chrome Hetfield brushed chrome Hetfield EMGs going in here I was going to go gold hardware and stuff, but I found some uh, of the hollow black tuners like the PV LTD rotors have, the neck throughs. So I'm going to use those on here and I'll just use the black hardware from this guy to uh, finish that up. And I really do like on this neck how these have some pretty deep black swirls. Granted, these are acrylic block inlays, nothing too fancy, but... Usually they're uh, more white than that. Let me see if I have another rotor neck lying around. Hold on a sec. Yeah, so here we go. Here's another rotor neck. You can see how much brighter and whiter these are. Very uh, more like shiny. And then these guys have a lot of black swirl in here. So I wonder if maybe, maybe this was an earlier run. I don't know. I really don't. The signature looks a little bigger on this headstock too. Let me see if I can pull that together. I guess I don't have to worry about this paint job very much right now. Because I'm going to redo the front anyway. But anyway, take a look. So, you guys see that? This is just a little bit bigger. See how it goes all the way up to the fourth one here? All the way up to it like this. And then on the newer neck that I have, I think is the newer neck here. Which actually says PV on the truss cover it's smaller it only goes down here that's kind of interesting that's really cool I wonder if there is a, is a, a difference this uh, binding looks way more yellow than this this looks way more white binding there's some corrosion on this clamping nut here but that can be cleaned off I wonder what the differences are age wise this binding is thinner on the side than this one. This one is quite a bit thicker. The dots are thicker on this one. That's really interesting. This says handcrafted in China on the back. I think this says the same. No, this says handcrafted in Indonesia. So there's a difference right there. So this is a Chinese neck. This is an Indonesian neck. More gloss here, less gloss here. Different heel shape here. This is more what you would see on like a Fender or something. This is like on more of a player's guitar. Both have scarf joints, so this one is about an inch from the volute. 
This one has a bigger volute and this is about two inches down. That's cool. There's a lot of differences. Very subtle shape difference. This is slightly more narrow right here. This is slightly thicker. That's super interesting. If you're a guitar nerd, the rest of you don't care, but to me. And also this this neck has never been never been put on. That's kind of cool. Hey coconut. So yeah, thank you John for the guitar. You guys are going to see this on the channel as it uh, progresses. This nice seafoam guy here, or girl, whatever. You're going to see this on the channel. Um, maybe I'll just do a video showing how I'm going to fix that. Lots of sanding. I know you guys love sanding. And uh, yeah. Thank you John Fields for the rotor that you sent me two and a half years ago that I'm just now opening. Sure appreciate it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to get going on some, uh, some guitar projects again, guys. It's a new year. Let's get to it. All right, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. No witness, no crime. I get a dime from your dollar, no dice, red collar crime. Have you tried it?